What's up guys, welcome to your 14th 3D Studio Max tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be covering editable polygons. Now this is probably what you're going to use when you're making you, the rest of your animations from now on actually like um, character models or you know cars or anything actually so let's go ahead and get right into it. Go ahead and click sphere and create a sphere and just press W on your keyboard for the move tool and bring it up and you know, bring it out so it's into view. There we go. So now that we created a spear, what we would usually do according to our last tutorials is right click it and create editable spline. But what we want to do is right click this, press convert to, and convert to editable poly. Now I can't show you this or else my screen recorder will mess up it again. I'm going to right click it, convert to, convert to editable poly. So you do that and I'll see you in a second. Alright guys, I just selected this, converted it to editable poly, and it brought up our modify tab and it shows that this is indeed an editable poly. So there are two different ways that we can alter this, and that is with our modifiers, is and those are things we learned before, that does uh, weird transformations through this, or we can w work with each of the individual sub-objects. So if we go ahead and expand this menu right here, we can see them all. The vertex is all the points that make up the object. The edges, let me see, I could probably scroll in this one a little better. The edges are these lines. The edges are what connect the vertexes. Um, you don't want to work with border usually unless you're doing something real specific. The poly is each one of these shapes or each face of it pretty much. So the polys are the faces and the last one, the elements, if you have any like, if you have like a couple objects in here then it's going to select the entire thing so you don't really want to work with elements a lot what we're going to be doing is work with poly like 99% of the time poly and probably polygons so we can work with the faces but for right now go to vertex because that's where we're going to be working with and let's just zoom in a little bit right there and another thing I want to point out let's just zoom in a little bit for more anytime we have one of these sub objects selected it's going to turn red so we can select them by clicking on them we can also click and drag to select a multiple amount or if we want to select non-adjacent ones we can click hold control click click and then we get like random ones if we hold down control and click so that's how we select um, various uh, what they're called sub objects and again once you select them they're going to turn red now a problem that we have with selecting sub objects is here's what happens whenever you select a sub object like this it doesn't only select that ones you see what it does is it looks through this and if you can see in this one probably shouldn't just select them all it not only selects the ones in front right here but it selects the ones behind it too and that's because if I turn this whenever I select it the box here what's a better way to see this like right here whenever I select these up here it looks through and now you can see it selected the ones behind it too so not only the ones that you could see but the ones through that the ones you couldn't see as well so this is a problem whenever we're trying to work with only this side of the spear so what do we want to do that whenever we can select it like this it only selects these and not the ones behind it too like there well let's go back home and what we can do is check this little box I need to take a break here for a second and this is called ignore back facing and what this little thing does is it only selects the ones with the normals pointing towards you or in other words the only selects the ones that you can see and it doesn't go through it so now when we have that checked and we select this look at this the ones in the back are not checked only the ones in front how awesome is that so I usually have ignore back facing on all the time I don't really know why they have it is the default off because you always or excuse me you usually want to have it um, on so now with those selected let's go ahead and well I want to teach you guys one more thing another thing that you can do is grow or shrink your selection whenever you make a selection like let's say we select these two vertices right here whenever we grow it expands our selection outward so what's a better view for this let me see here we go 
as you can see I have two selected now then when I grill that it has all of these selected then when I press grill again it has a huge range selected right here so I can do the opposite of that by shrinking 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 until nothing's left so that's another way to alter your selection but for now let's go ahead and do something with this I'm gonna select these two right here and make sure you have ignore back facing off press W to get your move tool and go ahead and pull them out so now we have this little thing popping out of our sphere right there so now let's go down here and select let's go ahead and select something like that one hold down control and you probably just want to work with your select object this one this one this one and this one and this one now go ahead and press W again and let's go hug it and take those in Y and move them back like right there so let me see how it looks so now we got something that looks like a nose kind of and a mouth and again I'm just teaching you how to use them I'm not making a real good animation but uh I guess the only thing we need now is eyes this pretty much looks like a jack-o-lantern but hey whatever so now in order to get eyes here's what I'm gonna do go back and get out of your modify panel and go to the create panel and let's go ahead and create two spheres so in your standard primitives go ahead and create a sphere uh, right there that looks good now let's go ahead and move that up and if we zoom out a little bit we can move it over up and over and just back a little bit to set it in his head I gotta position this just right don't want to mess it up right there actually you probably should move it over a little bit he ain't no cyclops so then after that go ahead with this selected hold down shift on your keyboard and we can move it over to this side right here and move it back just like that so what shift does is create a copy of it which you should know from the other tutorials so now we have this little dude with the nose that we extruded using the vertices and also the mouth which we selected all the vertices and pushed them back so that is your real quick tutorial on how to make a jack-o-lantern type again I'm not really didn't want to really create anything this tutorial I just want to show you how you can uh, use your vertices and sub objects to select different parts of the sphere or excuse me sphere and move them in and out so look at that that is a professional looking they should put that in a video game or something mister jack-o-lantern that is good I gotta send that I gotta put this on my resume but anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you know how to work a little bit with editable polys now. In the next tutorial, we're going to be uh, learning how to work with them in an advanced kind of way. So again, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.